I want to rise today to talk about uh, the uh, Water Resources Development Act. That's before the Senate for a vote tomorrow. Uh, to call WERDA, as it's called, uh, an expansive bill is an understatement. Uh, this single piece of legislation would impact the nation's harbors, its waterways, its shoreways, or shorelines, infrastructure, and of course, it will impact the budget for, for many years to come. Yet all the talk around the bill before us today seems to focus on what, thankfully, has been left out of its pages, the very topic I've just been discussing, earmarks. Uh, no doubt this reform-minded WARDA is a step in the right direction, and I applaud my colleagues in the House and in the Senate who have been able to move a bill uh, that is largely, uh, or that is without earmarks. It is a real accomplishment, and as it should be done. Uh, that said, uh, we, uh, I, I do have many concerns about the bill. My chief concern is the process by which infrastructure projects will be authorized. Simply put, uh, just because it doesn't have earmarks doesn't mean it's going to be a good process for the taxpayers. Under this legislation, non-federal interests will have authority to propose projects that meet broadly defined goals uh, to the U.S. Uh, Corps of Engineering, or Army Corps of Engineers, I'm sorry. Uh, once the Corps uh, confirms that these projects have met these broadly defined goals, they'll be included in a report to Congress that will serve as a de facto authorization bill for feasibility studies, and then on the, onto the conveyor belt uh, uh, to the Chief's report, and ultimately to construction. It seems to me that in order to be effective, this process relies on things that are either entirely unlikely or things that we just haven't seen before. It relies on state and local governments, for example, on being judicious on what they request from the Corps. Instead, I suspect that we'll see a, a virtual tsunami of requests flooding in. It requires that the Corps be selective in what it ultimately embraces as worthy projects. This, again, is an agency that has a reputation of never meeting a project that it didn't want to build. And it will require members of Congress to ultimately be willing to cross projects off a list to prevent taxpayer dollars from going to them. I think that uh, we can all be realistic about the chances of that happening. Now, during the process of this bill moving forward, I suggested that Congress ought to give the process some statutory sidebars to ensure that only worthy projects make it through the stringent cost-benefit ratio requirement and tight criteria for what uh, will and will not be reviewed. In addition to making sure that the projects themselves are actually worth constructing, limited budgets, uh, limited budgets means that some prioritization will be necessary. I believe that it would be prudent to include statutory priorities. Uh, unfortunately, these were not included. So my re concern remains that uh, this process will put us in the same position that we've been in recently, faced with sizable backlogs of uh, authorized core projects uh, for vary of varying worthiness. Appropriators will be in the position to pick and choose which of those get funded. Again, uh, just because something is near mark doesn't mean it benefits the taxpayers. My hope is that once we see how it plays out, uh, Congress will be willing to adjust this process. Uh, as it stands now, uh, while I, I sincerely congratulate those involved for working diligently to move forward in a matter consistent with the earmark moratorium that we have, um, I, I will not be supporting the WARDA conference report.